Okay, so this is a movie that will focus on the tree method for predicate logic. I like to talk about trees in the context of asking whether arguments are valid or invalid. So here's an argument. Is this argument valid or invalid? If you just use your intuitions, what you're going to be doing is saying to yourself, let me assume that the premises are true, that the premises are true, and let's see what that would tell me about the conclusion. If it's true that some frogs are green, and it's true that some green things are poisonous, would it have to be true that some frogs are poisonous? What you're asking yourself is, is it possible to have a counterexample? A counterexample is all premises true and the conclusion false. Is this a possibility? Well, to determine the answer, if you don't have good intuitions about this, what you should do is a tree. So let's do the tree. I'll leave you in suspense about the answer. To do the tree, we need to symbolize it first. Uh, some frogs are green. That's obviously an existential. There is an X, FX, ampersand, GX. Some green things are poisonous. Another existential. There is an X, GX, ampersand, PX. Some, excuse me, some frogs are poisonous. There is an X. FX, ampersand, PX. All right, so we have now symbolized the argument. There's the trunk of our tree. Of course, this is supposed to be the counterexample for the argument, and so what do we need to do? Negate the conclusion. And now, let's check and see if this counterexample makes sense. Okay, uh, the six-step method that corresponds to our proof method for predicate logic that is the same method that we use when we're doing trees. The first step of that method says assume opposite of conclusion of conclusion if quantified. We know that. Well, in fact, this gets done automatically because we're setting up the counterexample. So we really don't need to worry about step number one. Step number two is to do double negation. We don't have any cases of double negation here. What about quantifier exchange? Yes, we do have one of those. We have a dash in front of a, of a quantifier. So if we do quantifier exchange here, we're going to get for all x dash, and then we're going to write the rest of the formula exactly as it was. So for all x dash, fx ampersand px. Okay. Uh, now we are up to eo, and then after that we'll come uo. Do we have any existential outs? We have two existential outs. If we work on this one right here, we're going to rewrite the formula, replacing the variable with a name. What name shall we choose? Well, existential out has to be a new name, but at the moment there's no names in here, so there's no reason that we can't go ahead and choose A. That'll be fine. However, when we get to the next existential, we cannot choose A because it must be a new name, so this time, let's choose B. We get GB ampersand PB. Okay. No more existentials to work on. We have to do universal out. This is the place where the tree method varies a little bit from the proof method. Because for universal out on the tree method, we explicitly state that you have to repeat universal out, repeat for all names, in the tree. How many names are in our tree at the moment? Two, A and B. Therefore, we have to do this step two times. So I'm going to call this step four and step five. And when I work on it, I'm going to first get dash FA ampersand PA. And then I'm going to do it again and get dash FB ampersand PB. Okay. At this point, I've finished all of the quantified steps. I've got numbers in front of all of them, and so now I'm back to the old rules. All right? On the test, I will give you the tree rule handout, the same test you had on the, the same handout that I gave you on the fourth test. And so let's look at these. We'd like to get rid of the stacking rules first. Ampersands, of course, are stacking rules. So let's see, we're up to step six here. That's going to be FA, GA. Step 7 will give us GB, P, 
PB. Nothing is closed yet. Our last two lines that we have to work on are branching rules. So let's see, step eight will branch and give us dash FA or dash PA. Dash FA closes. All right, that's good. But dash PA remains open. PB and dash PB is not a contradiction. On number nine here, we're going to work the last step and we will get dash FB or dash PB. The PB and the dash PB closes, but dash FB, this branch, is going to remain open. Since we've got an open branch, what does that tell us about the argument? It is invalid. Even one open branch equals invalid. It's only when they're all closed that it means valid. Why does it work that way? If they were all closed, that would mean you get a contradiction on every possible attempt to attempt the argument. If you got a contradiction every place, that would mean that your setup, the counterexample, doesn't make sense. If the counterexample doesn't make sense, then the argument is valid. But what we see here is that we have an open branch. So that means that there is a way to make sense of the counterexample, and so the argument is invalid. So, is it possible to get a counterexample? Yes, it is, because we've shown that the argument is invalid. So it is possible for these premises to be true and these conclusions false. If you're not seeing that, let me draw a quick picture for you to show you how that would be a possibility. Let's use the, the sets here. And what we want to do is show that some frogs are green. So our goal is to make it true that some frogs are green and that some green things are poisonous. So here's frogs. Here's the green things. And we've got them overlapping. So that means that, yes, yeah, some frogs are green. It's not overlapping very much, but it doesn't have to overlap very much. Now we want to make some green things poisonous without making some frogs poisonous. How do we do that? Really very easy. There's the poisonous stuff. Poisons. All right. Uh, now we've made both of the premises true, but the conclusion remains false. This is why we, have, we say that this picture shows the counterexample for this argument. Since it was possible to get a counterexample, that's why we know that the argument's invalid. Okay, that, uh, if you can do this tree and you understand what happened with this tree, you should be able to do any tree in predicate logic.